Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Click the link in the description to get 10% off your first purchase. Saturday Night Live has been on television since 1975. They've won Emmy Awards, they've been a jumping off point for dozens of now world famous comedians. And whether you like the show or not, the sheer production of it, writing a 90 minute show on a Tuesday and then performing it live on television that Saturday is impressive. But, is the show actually funny? The short answer is yeah, of course it is. Sometimes. Pretty much every episode of SNL ever has had good sketches and it's had bad sketches. Because of that, it's a show that's almost impossible to define. You know, and the quality of an episode can range from hysterical, something you quote for the rest of your life, to polarizing or just downright cringy. Is it funny or is it not funny? In this case, I think the only logical answer is both but that's not ever how you hear people describe it. Something I've always noticed about SNL that makes it different than most other shows is not only does almost everybody have an opinion on it, but the opinions that people do have are much more matter of fact than they are with other shows. Like you'll often hear people say something like, oh, Breaking Bad? Yeah, I tried watching it, but it just wasn't really for me. Or like, yeah, I've seen Two Broke Girls, but I just don't really think it's funny, right? I don't think it's funny. But with SNL, it's almost always like, yeah, that's not funny. That show that's been on for 44 years and has had literally thousands of sketches, none of them are funny. It's never been funny. Or even more commonly than that, what you always hear people say, SNL hasn't been funny since the 90s or the 80s or for God's sake, the 70s? Really? Yeah, man, those first six episodes of Saturday Night Live, a thing of beauty. But I tell you, the roughly 1,000 episodes since then have all been crap. It would be one thing if you said, my favorite era of SNL was the 70s. That's fine if you want to say that, but just because your favorite part of the show was in 1978, doesn't mean the show hasn't been funny in 40 years. Now I will say the past four or five years, the show has been in probably the worst state it's ever been in. And I don't know if that's just a lack of talent, which is something that could be overcome by bringing in the right talent, but, I will take to my grave that the mid to late 2000s era of SNL is as good as any other period of the show. And it's not just because I grew up watching that and I'm very biased, but it is probably mostly bad. But no, look at the names you're dismissing. People often associate the death of SNL with the departure of big name celebrities like Eddie Murphy, Adam Sandler, uh, Will Ferrell's a big one. Will Ferrell left the show in 2001. You wanna know who's been on the show since then? Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, Kristen Wiig, Fred Armisen, Maya Rudolph, Bill Hader, Will Forte, Andy Samberg, Chris Parnell, Rachel Dratch, Jason Sudeikis, and that's just up until 2009. Most of those people were on the show at the same time. That's so much talent. And it wasn't just the cast, they had great, well-respected writers. Tina Fey was an amazing head writer. John Mulaney wrote on the show for several years. I know I have a bit of nostalgia and bias, for this period, but it just is so frustrating to me when people completely write off this entire era of the show just because Will Ferrell wasn't on it anymore. I will also be the first to admit, even as a fan of the show, that there have been entire seasons that have been borderline unwatchable. Typically, these are the transition seasons after big stars leave and either the cast that's replacing them isn't as good or they're just underdeveloped and the writers haven't figured out how to write to their strengths yet. You know, when you've spent six years writing sketches for Fred Armisen and Chris and Wig, and now you have to figure out how to write sketches for Noelle Wells and John Milheiser, those are two real human beings who were both on the show by the way, but things are gonna be a bit weird for a while. It's gonna be a learning experience, but that's just part of the show. And it always has been. And to me, it's something that I think makes SNL more respectable as an institution, is how how, how many times Lorne Michaels has had to retool the SNL roster to find success again after some of the strongest cast members have left. <laughs> Something that's always made me gravitate towards SNL as a fan is I think the same thing that's made me gravitate towards sports over the years. And I know I will probably lose a few of you here, but this is just how it makes perfect sense in my weird dumb brain. I know I rarely ever bring this up, but I am a massive football fan. And to me, managing the cast of SNL isn't that much different than like an NFL general manager having to build and maintain a successful football team. You gotta scout the players, you draft them, decide if they're good enough to stay on the team. If they are, then you have to decide how much money you're going to pay them to stay on the team, otherwise you might lose them to another team. And the big one is no matter what, no matter how good someone is on the show, they will eventually 
retire, and you have to find someone else to replace them. Unless it's Keenan Thompson because he'll be on the show forever. Just like in sports, there are ebbs and flows to this. There are times where the team is doing good and kicking ass. And then there's down years when they're in between good players and they're trying to figure out an identity. In 2011, when Peyton Manning missed an entire season, the Colts were historically laughably bad. And then they drafted Andrew Luck, and they've been mostly pretty good ever since. As a fan, those down years are never as fun to watch, but it's all a natural and necessary part of the process. And the fact that SNL always seems to figure it out in the long run is impressive. Turnover happens all the time on SNL. Rarely do they ever enter a season with the same exact cast as in the previous season. It hasn't happened since 2006. Uh, but every eight or 10 years, there's a big transition. As you can see on this table that I made myself, not because anyone asked me to, I, I did it because I wanted to. I did this for fun. But as you can see on this table, the last big turnover on the show was mainly in 2013, but started the year before and continued into season 40. In 2013, Bill Hader, Fred Armisen, and Jason Sudeikis all left the show at the same time. And this was just a year after Kristen Wiig and Andy Samberg left the show at the same time. So as you can imagine, 2013 was a pretty difficult year for SNL. They had five shoes to, or would it be 10 shoes to fill? Right, because they'd each have two. 10 big shoes to fill, and to do so, Lorne Michaels hired six new cast members all at once, but out of those six, only two of them lasted more than one season. Which in hindsight makes a lot of sense. It very much was just a case of Lorne Michaels throwing everything at the wall and seeing what would stick. A lot of it didn't, but what did stick was Kyle Mooney and Beck Bennett. They were hired in 2013 and they're still on the show now, sort of. I would love to see more of them, but I'll get to that later. If you're wondering what just happened there, my camera died in the middle of my sentence, and then in this next part, it's out of focus for like 40 seconds. I'm a professional YouTuber. So that's great and all, but like I mentioned before, it's pretty obvious that SNL is in a weird state right now, and there's several reasons for that. I'll start with the smaller ones before getting to the big obvious one. Number one, the writing has been pretty weak for a few years now. I think going from John Mulaney and Seth Meyers to Colin Jost is a pretty big step down. I mean, Colin's all right, but he's not as funny. I also think the tone of the show as a whole has shifted to a worse place, and it's not a coincidence that every time John Mulaney comes back to host, the whole show feels different. It like comes alive. And I think it's his influence on the concepts and ideas of the show that bolster everything else within it. And that's what the show is usually missing, is those like silly, weird ideas that work because they're rooted in really solid jokes. Number two, the cast is severely misused. Not bad, they're just not used properly. There's some incredible people on the show right now. Kate McKinnon is a legend. Cecily Strong is an angel. Actually, I'm pretty sure I'm in love with every single woman on the show. Keenan's a legend. Beck and Kyle are probably my two favorite human beings on the planet. So then what's wrong with the cast? Well, most nights it doesn't feel like I'm watching SNL. It feels like I'm watching the Alex and Mikey show featuring Leslie Jones and Pete Davidson. And they're all fine, but like, where's Kyle? Oh, his sketch got cut for time? for the 40th time in a row. You know he's the funniest person on the show, right? He's the closest thing the show has right now to a Fred Armisen, and he's never on it. But you know what, even having said all that, there's a reason I still watch this show every week, and it's because there have been some incredible sketches the past few years. The Office Potty was hysterical, the House sketches, those are great. The First impression sketch with Jason Momoa from this past Christmas was like an instant classic. So there absolutely has been some good sketches on the show, it just feels like maybe now, more than ever before, it's few and far between. But of course, the biggest reason the show seems to be suffering right now, and I feel like we would all agree on this, is that it is too, God damn polit- Or is it? Yeah, it is. But is it more political than it used to be? It seems like it, right? It seems like ever since a very specific date in the year 2016, the tone of the show has shifted drastically, right? Well, I wanted to check that, so I made another Excel Spreadsheet. Look, you guys gotta understand, as a YouTuber, I don't get the chance to work with Excel nearly as much as I'd like to. But I made another Excel spreadsheet, and this time I went through every episode from the past five seasons and counted first the number of sketches in every episode, not including Weekend Update or the host monologues, and then I counted how many of these sketches were centered around politics. If you're wondering what this green area means, what's so special about season 42, episode six, well, that was the show that aired on November 10th, 
2016, the first Saturday after Trump got elected president. Now, what you'd probably think is that since that day, there have been more political sketches per episode, as well as a higher percentage of the show being devoted to politics, and that is true. In the 47 episodes before Trump got elected, there was an average of one and a half political sketches per episode, but ever since then, that number has jumped up to two. So yes, there is a difference, but not a crazy difference. It's not like it's doubled or tripled. That number just means that there's one extra political sketch every two weeks. And that's not enough to make the whole show feel drastically different. So what happened then? Why does it feel so different now? And I think the big thing is just tone. SNL has always been political, that's not new. I remember Will Forte and Will Ferrell playing George W. Bush, Daryl Hammond playing Al Gore, Tina Fey playing Sarah Palin. They've never shied away from politics, it's very much been their brand. The difference is now, when Alec Baldwin comes on the show to play Trump for the 300th time, it no longer seems to be for the sake of comedy. It seems like they're just trying to make him angry. They seem to have a personal vendetta against the guy and they indulge in making him so mad that he angrily tweets at them. And don't get me wrong, I am absolutely not defending him. I don't like Trump, I wanna make that clear. I don't like him. I usually agree with SNL's point of view. I agree with what they're trying to say in a sketch, but that doesn't mean it's fun to watch. Tina Fey as Sarah Palin, that was fun to watch. You know how I know that was fun to watch? Because Sarah Palin came on the show. John McCain, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, they all came on the show after the show had done impressions of them because the impressions weren't meant to piss them off. Now, of course, part of that is Trump doesn't seem to have a sense of humor about himself. He seems like the most defensive person in the history of humanity, but it is also definitely a testament to the overall tone of the impression and how mean-spirited it has become to the point that even if you agree with what they're saying, it just isn't that fun to watch. Sorry about that. I hate talking about politics on this channel. I literally never do it because it feels like I'm walking through a field of landmines and no matter where I step, I'm gonna piss someone off. So I'm only gonna say one last thing on the subject. Comedy with an agenda is not comedy because it's not meant to make people laugh. It's meant to make people agree. And I just want to laugh. <laughs> Well, I've talked for about 14 and a half minutes now, so I should have enough information to definitively answer the question, is SNL funny? Let's check the numbers. Huh. I don't know, man. If you've seen all my comedy analysis videos like this one, then you know that I pretty much have the same lukewarm conclusion every time that comedy is subjective and I'm not in charge of what's good and what's bad. All I can do is provide my opinion and that's what I try to do in this video. I think you could take the information provided in this video and make an argument for why SNL is good or why it is bad. But at the end of the day, it's up to you. The only thing I think I can say is objectively good and consistently impressive about Saturday Night Live is their set production. Whenever they have a sketch that's very relevant, like it's covering something that just happened a couple days prior, I think people tend to be impressed by the writers and performers that they were able to turn it around in such a short amount of time. But think about all of the sets they use, all of the props and costumes and makeup that they wear. Production-wise, the show is top-notch and they consistently impress me with what they're able to do with the time limit that they have. But as far as the quality of the show goes, I think because of the format, because of the time crunch they're always on, for as long as the show exists, it will always be hit or miss. And even the things that I think are a hit and I think are a miss, I don't know, other people have different opinions. A lot of people seem to like Alec Baldwin's Trump. I don't like it, but clearly other people do. Those videos seem to get the most views on their YouTube channel. Those political episodes tend to get the highest ratings on TV. And then there's times where I'll see a sketch like the Jason Momoa, Beck Bennett, hide and seek one. That's just so funny right from the beginning. And then it has this weird turn like halfway through. It's just this perfect piece of art in my opinion, and I'll go to the video on YouTube and see that it has almost 2,000 dislikes and all these hate comments, and I'm like, oh yeah, no one will ever agree on anything. <laughs> I'd like to trust that with the credibility that I feel SNL has earned over the years, that they have the capability of getting over the hump that they're in right now and returning to their glory days of old, but I guess if that never happens and they eventually disband, maybe that'll be good too. At the very least, that means Kyle Mooney can get back to making dank-ass, sick-ass YouTube videos. And we can all agree that that is good. All right, maybe not all of us. 
to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Squarespace. They're one of my favorite companies to work with and their product is absolutely phenomenal. Every time I've had to make a website in the past two years, whether it was my own personal merge website or just a joke website that I made to add an extra layer of production into a video, I've always turned to Squarespace and it's always so easy. You can start by choosing one of these amazing designer templates that will help you achieve whatever look you're going for, whether you're making a blog, an online store, or even a photo collection of your life-size cardboard cutout of Arnold Schwarzenegger. Squarespace can help you do it quickly, easily, and beautifully. Already have a website or multiple websites, but you want to transfer those domains to Squarespace to have more consolidated management of those websites? You can do that. Need help with your website at four in the morning because you're very tired and forgot how to change the font size? Call customer support. They'll help. They're 24-7. They're award-winning. Hell, I didn't even know you could win awards for that, but Squarespace did. To get started making your brand new website, go to squarespace.com slash Drew and you'll get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash Drew. Do it. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and helping support my channel for over two years now. And thank you to everybody who uses the products that I tend to plug on this channel. It's because of you guys that the brands keep coming back and supporting me. And so you're also supporting me by supporting them and everyone supported and that's great. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, as you know, I like to make videos like this every few months and I'm always pleasantly surprised by the positive response. If you didn't like this video, that's okay too. I'm not gonna take it personally or anything. Caitlin. Most of you are gonna watch that and be like, what, my name's not Caitlin, but for the one Caitlin out there who was just thinking about how much she didn't like this video, you're gonna think twice about not liking a video next time. But anyway, that's it for now, guy. Hope to see you. Tune in for next week's video, which will just be a montage of my silver medal gymnastics run in the 2004 Olympics. I was 11. Goodbye. <laughs>